is a little demo on how to do the inside of the cube and there is a little bit of um, description in the handout um, that contains um, these pages, okay? So there's a little bit of a repeat of that. Um, so to make the inside you will definitely need, uh, well some people may not need this page which is page 5 uh, which shows how to find points that are along the edge of the cube, but, um, but a lot of people will. So let's just say for now that you'll need both page four, um, which shows two dimensions uh, from these points A, B, and C, which we're calling A, B, and C, which lie on this median line on the face of the cube. And then again, if you look at this, it's a little light on the screen, but it'll be a little better on the video. Um, so we're basic, basically measuring or finding points that lie along this line, okay, which we're calling the median. And then for simplicity, we're just saying those points repeat because this B is going to be the same as this B and this B and this B. This C is going to be the same there, 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 and there. Uh, and the same is true here for um, uh, for the for this section, okay, for these points to lie on the edge of the cube. Uh, I'm just highlighting them here, but they repeat on the other side as well. So let's see, this is D, and therefore that's also D. Okay. Uh, so let's go back to my original section, which was uh, one, two, three, four pieces. And let's just say you have your cube, and your cube now is rough, but it's still precise. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to mark my points on one of the sections, okay? And I'll just take any one because it's going to repeat, right? So I'm going to mark my C, my B, my other B, my other B, and the other C here. So literally, with a big marker, um, on the rough you can do it, or just a pencil, uh, just mark your points, okay? That way um, you can't lose track of them. How do you know what to, what to mark them? Uh, well, just the corners of your, of your shape, right? So if I go from here to here and there, then that's a corner, that's a point. That's another point, that's another point right here. But how do you know what letter to put? Uh, oh, just follow the handout. So in other words, follow this. Yeah, I'm just, you know, this is arbitrary, right? Oh, oh, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, so A, B, and C, we're calling these three points, and then we're just repeating them. Um, okay. Uh, and then what we want to end up is with something that looks like this, which is a, like a fan-shaped pattern that's going to repeat uh, four times, uh, and which we can make in two pieces. Uh, I'm going to repeat this process now. I'm going to take this apart. And I'm just going to show you. Actually, it made a little mistake here. It was a little short. Uh, anyway, so, and just pick one. It doesn't matter which one because they're all the same. Okay? Uh, and because the shape is essentially a fan, what you're doing is essentially drawing these lines along the face of the cube. They're going to be the bases of your triangles, okay? And the other sides of your triangles are going to be lines connecting those points, those bases, to the center of the cube, which we're calling Z, okay? So we know this because we already know it, and the inside we know because, in part, I've already given it to you by drawing these sections, right? By drawing this section uh, and that section. That is to say that for me to, um, to figure out how far I am from this point here on this edge of this cube to the center, one way is to cut it through and then draw a line from that center to that point. And essentially that's what this is showing here. Um, so but let's just do one. I'm move this paper here. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is get a pretty good piece of paper. I, I used the same white stock that was shiny on one side. And I'm going to make sure that I hold on to this because this is my um, kind
kind of master drawing, okay? In fact, I'm going to even write master, and I'm going to put my name, and you should do the same to yours. So, um, the first thing I want to do is go from, you can do anyway, but let's just say from C to B, okay? Um, how do I measure that? It's already given to you here, right? That's already your uh, master. Oh, yeah, I forgot to say. So use this as your master uh, measurement, not just for these internal parts, but also for the face of the cube, okay? So use this square, which you know is or it's already 4x4 four four perfectly to take your measurements. So let me make this a little darker. And we're just going to move along here, okay? This way. So I take my piece of paper. So this paper is fairly thick because I don't want it to deform. And I, draw, I just draw a line, just anywhere really. Okay. Now I could even just draw maybe a little dot. Now I'm going to make these dots again pretty big, but you're going to make them really small so that you don't so that you're precise, okay? So, and now I definitely don't want to measure anything. I want to, I mean, I want to measure, but measure with the compass. So you take your compass and you just plot all these distances. Okay, so from C to B. So C to B. Okay, so now I've got the outside, that line, this line, and I'm going to measure uh, C and B. So the first one was correct. And then the second one is this one. point in B and my triangle is going to have much more correct shape. Does it matter what angle that first line is? Through? No, that's completely arbitrary. This one? Yeah. yeah. No, I just, I just want to make it fit, but that's all I care. Okay, yeah, this now makes sense because the segments from B and see a different. Okay, so now let's try this again. So we're going to move from from there to there, B to B. Okay, that's my next line along this arc here. And once again, that's going to be two inches. But once again, I'm going to use my compass measure it. Okay. So that's scan B, but what is it exactly? Um, because that's B and this is B, I'm going to use that again. Now I'm going to take a shortcut, measure it, and at this point I point in Z because that's how I'm going to find the unknown part. So that's also B, and this is B. So that's my second piece. That piece is going to cover this area right here. extremely careful now because if this is correct and this works for my rough then pretty much I'm done with the project right the rest afterwards it's just just like execution um, <coughs> ok 
Okay, so the next line is from this B to this B, which as you notice is actually a little bit shorter than this distance. This happens to be two inches, that's the diagonal of a one square, uh, one inch square box. Okay, so let's uh, measure that. Essentially, that's the square root of 2, right? Because it's 1 inch square. And I keep going from the point that I do know. And I draw another line. And that's also called the B, right? Because it's we're calling it a B. And now because this B and this B and this B, they're all at the same distance from the middle, I can again take another shortcut and just use again this distance because I know that's from Z to B, right? So things are getting a little faster. And I can just extend this. It's a little harder to show here because this is shiny. Okay, so I have one left. Let me connect that. So now the last one is C again, um, and the distance from this B to this C again is one inch because we know that's the module, right? But let's measure it again with a compass. So I just keep going, right, in my fan shape. Now this one is going to be more interesting because it's actually going to take a turn, so to speak. Okay, let me highlight it again. Um, again, I could go back to my template, but I'm going to take another shortcut. I know that from here to here is from C to Z. Somewhere here is Z C, so I'm just going to take it off from my working master and save some time. So now I point, with that distance I point again in my C center. And that should do it. Um, and now we're going to quickly check, okay, if it's right. So what we're doing is we're really finding the exact dimensions, the exact true dimensions of every single spot on that outside surface to the middle because there's no other, you know, we can't just guess, right? Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to quickly draw some tabs and I'm going to do it, you know, not very precisely because it doesn't matter because they're going on the inside. So I'm going to put a tab on each one of these bases. Once again, I'm not going to cut this. I'm going to really keep this for my um, as my master. Uh, you need to taper your corners here again because if you don't, they're going to hit each other. Here, I'm just going to use that. Okay, so that, that's pretty good. Now I'm going to, again, put my name because since I flipped it, just in case you lose it, somebody else finds it. Um, okay. Piece of 
Okay. Uh, so the paper we're going to use for the inside is actually thinner, but it's higher quality. And the fact that it's thinner, you might think, oh, that's harder. Well, because it's thinner, it's going to be more precise when you do your folds. So there's actually an advantage to it. Uh, anyway, just put it underneath and try not to waste too much paper. So let's see. And do it with your very sharp. Um, so I'm going to also um, mark my tabs as well as my um, actual triangles. So I think I got them all. Now at this point, um, they're hard to see. And again, what I do is I make myself little, little arrows to point to where I need to um, connect. Um, after a while, you'll figure out your own strategy, but this seems to work for me. Also makes an interesting design. Let's just quickly get this. Again, I'm rushing now, but I don't want you to rush, okay? in pencil again when you before you actually fold it you can erase the pencil so it's really clean I'm not doing one on this side because it's likely that in my design, uh, well actually when you double this up, you only need one because it's going to reconnect. Okay, so now the other important thing is that, uh, and now I'm going to put big letters here, but you wouldn't want to do this in your master, right, because you would be mocking it up, but I'm just going to do it to um, keep track of my own work. What will happen is because of this shape, you're going to have a mountain fold, a valley fold, and a mountain fold there. Okay, so these and these are going to be scored from the above, whereas this one is going to have to be scored from underneath. Okay, so that gets a little tricky. Um, let's start with the easier ones. So uh, this one and this one. Okay, the two outside these. So. Use a metal ruler if possible and just lightly score it. And I'm going to go across now, just like I showed you making the book. Now, this is very thin paper, so you have to really be gentle uh, that it doesn't cut right through. Just a little bit, okay? So now I'm going to try to plot where this thing is on the other side. Let's see if I can. This guy right here and the center. And that's my other score on the other side. So there's a little bit of planning and kind of logical reasoning. Um, so of course all your tabs are going to need a score. So let's do those. And again, 
again, you kind of hear the scraping sound a little bit of the plate, and that's good, because if you don't, it means you're going right through. Exact, except the corner here, the origin of my tab. Uh, I think I might be running out of tape. Better hurry up. Um, the tabs you can almost do by hand, you know, just like this. Right? Doesn't matter. But this, now, if that's a good edge, you want to use the straight edge. Let's see where we are. I mean, there is no way around get, getting around the fact that paper is physical just like everything else. It's got a thickness, it's going to get in the way, it's going to double up, uh, it's going to curl. So you just have to try to be as close as possible to what you need. Right. So now let's fold it according to what we... So there you go. That's nice. It feels good because it's not falling apart and yet I get a nice clean... Um, see, I'll zoom in a little bit. You won't be able to see this in the video, but you can see it's a nice crease. Okay, so that's my valley fold, the reverse fold, and essentially what I just did is basically, res you know, solved, if it turns out to be correct, my entire cube, because it will just repeat um, four times on each half cube. So now we can put it, uh, and you'll immediately see if it's right. In other words, once you now attach it, uh, you'll be able to see if pretty much looks good. And actually, this looks pretty good. Okay, so let me put some tape. Um, and when I say that it looks pretty good, is that once you attach it, um, if it's correct, it won't, it won't exert any pressure on the sides of your cube to either towards the inside or towards the outside, but it will, it will still make it um, stay nice and flat. Usually what I do is I put the tape on one side first, just like that. Okay, get it down there on the piece, and then I position it, and I fold it over. And again, because it's a rough one, it doesn't have to be, you know, so pretty. And even like just going straight across like that is probably good. The trick is to try not to get a slight difference um, multiply itself so that when you get from one end to the other it's become, you know, an eighth of an inch, okay? So you have to essentially negotiate the corners and say, well, how much can I push before I'm like... Yeah, this doesn't look right. I have to pull a little better. Now, I didn't, disclaimer, I didn't make the green cube, so <laughs> it is possible that it's a little bit off. Okay. But you can see it's, it's pretty good. Like I said, maybe the green cube is a, is a little bit... saying before is that you know ideally now this this side is really nice and straight okay it's 
pulling in a little bit. So obviously there is maybe something that's not quite right in the um, in this. But um, also you can see that this little triangle is a horizontal surface, and you can also imagine that. Um, there's going to be another little triangle here which is going to match the same plane. So when we actually make the final, we might want to combine these two triangles and make one solid um, diamond or uh, kite-shaped area right here. Um, otherwise, that's pretty good. Okay, I feel pretty good. Now I can move on and say, okay, now I can just make, you know, my... Um, well, it's a good idea to finish your rough so that you have it and also you need it later. Um, and then you know that your master is um, correct. Okay? And that's the important piece. So once you do this, don't lose it because that's important. Um, that's it.